parents good morning nice to have you here this is GMS intercession prayer group for children as a network where we pray for children and our families we intercede for everyone here so if you have any prayer point please don't forget to submit it right in our comment section uh, subscribe to our channel and then like it send to other people and your loved ones share any video that you uh, that resonates with you or that you want us to talk about topics that you want us to talk about please don't forget to drop it in the comment section thank you for joining us today today we have been led to talk about arguments 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 happens at home as regularly as possible as soon as your child begins to develop his or her personality and way of doing things this will inevitably come into conflict with your own you know with toddlers it manifests itself as um, tantrums you know with older children you know you can have them as argument um, with all the children who are able to express themselves more clearly, arguments arise when your boundaries and their wishes collide. Part of being a good parent is setting and maintaining reasonable boundaries. But you also need to give your child the opportunity to air their grievances. You know, healthy parenting has no problem with setting the rules. But it's also about seeing your child's point of view. So. Um, we have um, about 10 guidelines, 10 tips to change a family argument from being destructive to productive. So before we talk about the 10 tips, please let us pray. In Jesus' name, I will pray that our children will use speech that glorifies you in the name of Jesus. Yes, we will argue because we disagree in certain things. It does not mean that we hate each other. In love, we will be able to express ourselves and we'll have listening ear from us, the parents, and also the children will have understanding in the name of Jesus. Your spirit and your truth so that what overflows from their mouths will be words of life and not death. Put a monitor over them, their mouths, and us that every temptation to use profane, negative, cruel, hurtful, uncaring, unloving, and not compassionate languages would pierce their spirit and make them feel uncomfortable. We pray that obscene or foul languages be so foreign to them that if words you know like that ever do find their way through their lips, they will be like gravel in their mouth and be and he or she will be repulsed by them. Help them all not to hear themselves so that words don't come out carelessly, you know, or carelessly in the name of Jesus. Father, your word says that in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, your word says that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Heavenly Father, may they speak life and not death in the name of Jesus. May they be quick to listen and slow to speak so that you know, the speech will always be re seasoned with grace, equipped equipped with power from God in the name of Jesus and the sense and the and the um, discernment to hear from you before they speak in the name of Jesus. Lord, help them to grow up as patient children to when they're speaking to anyone in any situation. Father, let them think of it. Let them not use languages that are hurtful to you in the name of Jesus. Enable them to always speak words of hope, health, encouragement and life and to resolve that in their life their mouths will never sin in the name of jesus amen now back to argument we're talking about 10 tips to make your argument productive and not destructive so number one i'll say don't gang up while it's important for parents to be in agreement, don't make your child feel as if he or she is, you know, being marginalized, being suppressed, you know, to put them in the middle as if, you know, you're having like a gang, a gang up, maybe you and your husband ganging up against your child. Let your argument be very constructive. Say what you mean and how you feel, you know, as clearly as possible. 
Then number two, never say never. Try to avoid using ups, absolute languages like you will never go out. You will never see, you know, the playground again. Um, you know, or you never do your homework. You know, things like absolutes, you know, are almost always not true. I will make your child feel victimized. Keep to specific incidents as much as you can. Then number three, avoid sounding accusatory don't say um you uh, for example you could say i feel or i felt disappointed i felt disappointed when you you know rather than you are a disappointment you are you know a bad child or you are insensitive and stuff like that you know critic just reduce as much as possible you know any form of criticism you know because it makes them uh, feel like um they are accused you know they are the center of the whole you know um topic you know god will help us now number three is something else bothering you parents you know sometimes you can just be very edgy uh maybe because work didn't go well today or you just woke up late and things are not going fine you know what is bothering you you know is it like make sure you're not just in the mood for a fight you know hormones can set in mommies you know what i'm talking about tiredness money worries marital strives work stress can also make you unusually irritable so first of all ask yourself is something else bothering you what is bothering you you know god will help us okay then number five stick to the point focus on the issue in hand don't deviate don't suddenly start bringing up things that they did in their auntie's place in their grandfather's place in their gra grandmother's place you know what is happening right now focus on it so that the child can learn and the child sees that it's not just you know about um things that they can't remember you know then number six manage your anger who is the parent it's you right don't blow up you know in a discussion you know you are the adult right recognize that fact always so when things are getting heated be responsible enough to say things like um we can have the discussion again or let's revisit it again because you see already your anger is almost taking over or your annoyance or whatever it is so manage it manage it so we don't blow things out of proportion now number seven turn off the tv you cannot have a sensible meaningful discussion if you are battling with noise from the television or distraction or phone or the speakers you know on you need a quiet room where you are not going to be distracted or constantly interrupted number eight uh, learn to listen children switch off when they feel a lecture coming on don't hog the conversation talk over or interrupt use the communication you know method of okay time for you to talk now i need to listen to you why did you do it talk to me you know your listening skills for your child you know you open it up because you're correcting them in love it's not uh, in uh, anger or bitterness no matter what children make mistakes people make mistakes so please learn to listen then number nine be nice leave name calling and hostful comments you know out of the whole thing verbal abuses such as calling your child lazy good for nothing you know and those kind of things please stupid bad has no place in a healthy home in god's home Home. you know those name calling has no place remember the spa in the tongue right okay then number 10 stay calm tempers can soon escalate in an argument keep things cool by you know staying seated breathing slowly and thinking carefully of you know what you want to say you know so in a bit to correct you don't end up being the one that is now the problem so stay calm so these are 10 points to make uh, an argument productive uh, arguments are 
almost inevitable in a home. So I pray that God will help us. So as we come to the end of this um, topic, I'd like us to take some Bible verses that can help us monitor our tongue, monitor what we say and how you know the other person sees it. God help us in Jesus' name. Now let us look at Psalm 19 verse 14. Let the words of your mouth and the meditation of my, my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord my strength and my redeemer may god help us in jesus name also matthew chapter 12 verse 35 says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things may god not allow evil come near us and our children in jesus name now the book of proverbs chapter 12 verse 18 says there's one who speaks like the piercing of the sword but the tongue of the wise promotes health may our tongue may our mouth and our speech our talk bring life to our home in the name of jesus now the book of proverbs chapter 16 verse 24 says pleasant words are like a honeycomb sweetness to the soul and health to the bones in jesus name also finally we take the book of matthew chapter 12 36 to 37 but i say to you that for every idle word men may speak they will give account of it in the day of judgment for by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned thank you thank you so much for joining this program we pray that god will take control of our body our soul and our spirit and that of our entire household that even during argument we will learn to speak life to our children in jesus name may god help us in jesus name so we have come to the end of today thank you for joining us like subscribe share this video also comment please tell us the topics that you like us to take um the topic of today was um uh, initiated by someone so arguments is a common um, a common thing in the house so we decided to take this so comment ask add add more add more comments if you think there are other things that you have done uh, to make your own argument productive god will help us in jesus name have a good day bye